it's Bonnie. Happy Wednesday night. Oh my gosh, there's no good TV on tonight. None. So I'm like, I'm coming on. I'm doing another video. <laughs> you get me for another, another uh, 15, 10, 10, 15 minutes. <laughs> so, well, first of all, I got to tell you guys, I got a couple things in my body care day haul today. I actually packed up a couple of them this morning uh, to mail as gifts. I got some shower gel that I was sending out. Um, but the couple of new things I got for me... I got the Frosted Coconut Snowball Body Butter. How amazing is this packaging? I don't even like this scent that much, but this packaging is so um, mystical. I'm like, I'm like loving the packaging. <laughs> I also got two of the new Aromatherapy uh, Soothing Foot Scrubs. I can't wait to try these and let you know what I think. I'm excited about these. So I did get that for Body Care Day. But I kind of wanted to address... Um, the big question out there is how long can you keep your body creams? And then I'm going to tell you what I do with my body cream after it's gone bad. <laughs> it's not even gone bad, but I'm going to, I'm going to let you know what I do. I got my, I got my cloth here because I polished my furniture with it. <laughs> so I kind of wondered if Bath and Body Works had anything online about how long their body creams last. So I did find a customer care.bath and body works page. I'll post it below. Um, it says, what is the shelf life of Bath and Body Works products? It says, unless the product has a specific expiration date listed, a product shelf life is two to three years. That makes sense. Um, I feel like any of like the mist, I mean, Unless the smell goes bad. Those are alcohol-based. I can't imagine those go bad. Um, it said products like wallflower bulbs, uh, scent portable refills, do not have a shelf life of three years. They will remain fragrant as long as they are unopened. It says products should be stored in a cool, dry place with minimal exposure to direct sunlight. That makes sense. So they actually have a really neat way to figure out how old a product is. And it's kind of confusing. Um, so each product that Bath & Body Works has, has a stamp on it up here, and it's really difficult to see, <laughs> especially if you're 50 years old, <laughs> but you can kind of see it stamped. So for Secret Wonderland, the stamp says zero is the first number. Now, the born date is actually for products that are made after 2010. Um, if they're made before 2010, they have a little bit of a different way to uh, figure it out. I don't have anything uh, pre-2010. Uh, pre I don't. I just, I, I would have tossed it by then. I wouldn't keep anything for 10 years. Um, so the first digit represents the year. And actually, the year right now is zero. So 2020. So if you see the zero is the first number, that means this was produced in 2020. Now, if you have a product that has like an eight, this one has an eight, that means this product was produced in 2018, which is only two years ago. Um, so then the next three digits represent the day that it was um, created. It's like a batch code. So for example, this one says 318. So that means it was made on, um, it was produced on the 318th day of the year, which, you know, your guess is as good as mine. I know it's later in the year, but what the heck. <laughs> so I actually found a cool website that shows the days of the year. So if you look at the 318th day of 2020, that is November 13th. So this product was produced on November 13th, which I thought was really cool because I was like, wow, <laughs> this is a pretty fresh product. <laughs> so it kind of gives you an idea of when Bath & Body Works is producing um, these products. So for example, um, A Thousand Wishes. This one was produced on 308. So this was produced a little bit before The Secret Wonderland. Um, I'm trying to look at this. Uh, oops. <laughs> knocking stuff over. Um, this was 297. So the 297th day would be, I gotta look at my little chart here. What is 297? That is October 23rd. This was produced. Um, so anything that we get in the fall, it looks like, you know, they're only about a month and a half out. So they get stuff produced into us really quickly, which I think is cool. Um, so I think my oldest product that I currently own 
is one of the Seatox seaweed body creams because this one says it's got a, I can't even see the number. It looks like an eight. I don't think I have anything from 2017. I have tossed everything from 2017, I believe. Um, Seatox is pretty old. Um, this is 2018. Um, I'm trying to look at the number here. These are so light. This looks like, oh, five, four, this is 207. So these are both 2018 products. I also have a chamomile and honey here. Um, this is also 2018. So I kind of realized going through a couple of my, um, collections just quickly that I pretty much toss everything that is over three years old. Um, I don't keep it. One of the ways I can tell that my body creams have gone bad is I shake them. Um, and if you shake them and they're real liquidy, I just toss them. I don't even use them to polish my furniture. I'm like, they're pretty gross. Um, so this one actually, uh, oh, dang, nah, I wasn't looking at this one. The pumpkin picking. This is a pretty old one. So these products basically have, that's what I was looking for, the ingredients, shea butter, cocoa butter, and aloe. So I'm sure the products break down. I mean, I'm no scientist. I took high school chemistry, but eventually, even with preservatives, things are going to break down. Um, I have noticed, and I don't know if there's a scientific basis behind this, but sometimes you'll get like a yellowing um, of a product where it kind of looks a little funky shade of yellow. And I always thought that that was because it was a vanilla based product. I don't know if that's true. I think I read that somewhere um, that sometimes those fade, but I have noticed a lot of my vanilla products. Um, I was just looking at the um, Dream in the Sky. That one looks really yellow. I also noticed that a lot of times a product is going like bad if it um, if it doesn't smell as good. Like if the smell is really light or if it smells kind of off. I don't think I've ever smelled a smell that was like really off. Um, what I notice more is that the scent kind of fades away. Like my pumpkin picking, I can barely smell this one anymore. However, my chamomile and honey... This one, um, it almost looks brand new, honestly. Like, I mean, it looks bright white. Um, the scent is perfect on this one. And this is two years old. So this one, I think, I think different scents probably preserve um, a little bit differently. Maybe like it, it has to do with the ingredients. I don't know. But um, I always do the smell test. You know, if I'm going to put it on, I kind of look at it. Does it look fresh? Does it smell fresh? Um, and then what I do is... If it's gross, I go through all my products and I toss things that are bad. I have no problem doing that. Um, as a collector, I don't want to like keep old product that's like really old. So one thing I like to do in January, I do a whole o overhaul of my collection and I will go through and I will toss old products. And a lot of people are like, no, don't toss them. I don't care. I'm, I'm like a germaphobe. I am big on getting fresh product. If it's two to three years old, it's going in the trash. <laughs> That's just how I am. Um, and that works for me. I mean, you know, what did I pay for these? You know, five, six bucks. I got two, three years out of it. You know, it, it's a good deal for me. <laughs> so I like to get new product. So if a product is like a year or two old and it's a scent that I absolutely love, like for example, like Twisted Peppermint, like last year's Twisted Peppermint, what I do is I polish my furniture with it. So what I do is I grab one of these washcloths. This is just my, um, I think I got these at Home Goods. Um, I like to use the fluffy ones. And then what I do is I'm just gonna use Secret Wonderland here, is I either put the product right on my furniture. I'm just gonna use this as an example back here, or I just put the product right on my washcloth. And then what I do is I just rub it into my furniture. Now. I don't have really expensive furniture here. I mean, these are basically pressed wood bookcases. Um, I have a nice bedroom set that I probably paid, you know, a couple thousand dollars for like 15 years ago. Um, I have a couple of, like my dining room table is pretty nice. I have always used Bath & Body Works to polish it up. It looks amazing. I've never had a problem. But if you've got like really expensive furniture, I would like test it out. I don't think I would, you know, <laughs> I don't think I'd put it on my really expensive furniture unless you ask the manufacturer of the furniture if you can put um, shea butter and cocoa butter on your furniture, but I've never had a problem. And what I like about it is not only does it pick up the dust, 
but it makes your entire house smell like your favorite Bath and Body Works product. Like literally, like this smell. Um, I actually just used Secret Wonderland today in my bedroom. I polished all my furniture, <laughs> and now our entire bedroom smells like Secret Wonderland. It's awesome. But I will do that. Like I will pick a scent, and I will wipe down all the furniture. It picks up the dust really well, and um, as long as you rub it in, that's the key. I like to rub it in really good. Um, it doesn't leave a residue or anything. I don't know. I've been doing this for probably five years. And um, it's my favorite furniture polish because I hate Lemon Pledge. I hate furniture polish. It gives me asthma. I don't like the chemicals. And this has been like the best solution I have ever had um, to polish my furniture. So that's what I do with my older products. Coming to January, I'm going to show you guys how I store a lot of my products. I like to store cool, dry place. I use crates. I try to um, organize everything by um, season. And then I usually take a lot of the products that I use every day and I store them in bins like this. Um, Cause you know, these are the products that I'm going to use on a day to day basis. I've got a lot of like Ray Dunn baskets that are sitting around my room and I will grab products out of there. I also have a bookshelf where I, you know, display and store product, but I'm super neat um, with my collection. I want to make sure everything is organized. And then I also, um, like I said, I toss products. You're, I'm not going to have products from like 10 years ago. I don't like to keep product for a long time. Um, I'm really interested in the new stuff that Bath & Body Works is always bringing out. So like I said, um, I'll either use it, toss it, or like if I have like, you know, shower gels that I've never used that are like a year old, um, I give this to my mother-in-law, my husband's aunt, you know, like I definitely, I, I gift it around. So um, nothing goes to waste. The body creams, I think, are the products that probably, um, are the ones that actually go bad. But like I said, I try to recycle. I do use this as furniture polish. <laughs> and then I really don't. I, I, I have no guilt in tossing a product that's gone bad. I just don't. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's no longer good. It's hitting the curve. <laughs> So anyway, I just wanted to answer that question because a lot of people have been asking me and I think it was interesting um, to explain how you can tell how old a product is uh, by reading that little um, stamped uh, little code on the top there. So I hope you enjoyed this video. This is kind of fun to do. I always like um, scientific videos. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.